for Cummins. And what you've come to is a presentation to try to give um, you all or your clients, if you're a consultant engineer, some options uh, regarding uh, replacing or repairing a uh, medium voltage dry type transformer. Uh, from time to time, these transformers do uh, fail or experience uh, end of life. Uh, they, you know, are designed to last, you know, around 20 years uh, in an ideal environment. And uh, I guess I've been to several places recently where the environment was not what I would call ideal. Um, so if, if uh, the transformer is exposed to um, heating and it is um, in a very dusty environment. Um, you know, this is where traditional medium voltage dry types um, do, do, do not do very well. Um, so we're going to give you a few options to, um, to modify or replace or refurbish um, these transformers. So um, with me is Mike Stafford. And Mike Stafford Hello, has... Everyone. Yep. Yeah, Mike, why don't you take a minute and just introduce yourself. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Mike Stafford. I am here with a AMR PIMCO. Um, I have been in the uh, transform industry for around 27 years now, and um, this is an industry that I have grown to love, and the rebuilding of these transformers is something that I uh, have seen become very uh very good over the past years with helping people in solutions, especially with um, quick turnarounds and, and things of that nature, which we'll talk about all that today. Great. So, um, talk about the options. Uh, well, one, one thing I want to go over first is uh, on the go to webinar, there is a uh, chat box. And uh, if anybody has a question at any time, uh, you know, we can stop the presentation, and, um, you know, move into a, a discussion uh, if you guys have, have questions. So please just type your question into the chat box uh, where the uh, red arrow is uh, shown here. And, um, and uh, we, will, we will read your question aloud and we will uh, try to answer it. So. So if you have a uh, transformer that is, um, let's, let's just say, at, at, at the very end of its life or, or, or has failed uh, in some way, you know, we, we really, you, you've got four d discrete options. Um, you can replace the entire transformer and its enclosure. And, uh, and this is a good solution when you have a transformer that is cable in, cable out. Um, uh, maybe it's an outdoor transformer, uh, or maybe it's just in, a, in an equipment room where it has cables coming in and, and coming out. And, um, you know, there's no coordination to be done with a, uh, a, a unit substation. Um, and that's a clean, easy way to... Um, if you can't do that, uh, one of the th ways you can upgrade a transformer is to place the entire core and coils. And uh, Mike and I have some experience with this uh, personally. Um, we did a project in Atlanta uh, not not too too long ago, in which um, the customer uh, decided to replace all of their medium voltage dry types. And we will go through in just a minute and show you uh, kind of step by step how that how that process worked. Um, and that's a that's a very good and very economical option. Uh, if you have the uh, ability to get those units out um, of the building easily. Um, another option, if you have uh, lots of time and you have a um, maybe a, a unit substation that's double-ended or you have a transformer that's not critical, um, the transformer can be pulled, pulled out of the enclosure and sent to uh, the factory. Uh, for evaluation, testing, and and rebuilding. And uh, finally, Mike, if you don't um, if you don't mind, yeah, there, let me uh, say a little something on that. Uh, with the 
in-house rebuild, and that's what we call when you actually bring a transformer from the uh, field into our facility to be rebuilt. Um, that is something that when you're looking at the timeline uh, regarding rebuild versus new, we normally come in with a lesser time to have that transformer rebuilt in-house. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind as well when, you, when you're looking at timelines. If it is double-ended, like Michael said, uh, this is a good option if you have the, the, the time to uh, allow that to happen versus the time that it takes for a new transformer to be built. Uh, just, just keep that in mind as well. That's great. Great point, Mike. And in addition, uh, all the measurements and things uh, that would formally have to be done in the field um, are really not necessary um, since the the coring coil, uh, the original coring coil goes back to the factory. Uh, there's no need to measure uh, you know, things like secondary bus connections or uh, primary primary bus to make sure it matches a uh, existing unit substation. Uh, our fourth option is uh, an on-site rebuild of the transformer, and we'll show a uh, uh, illustrated overview of that uh, in just a few minutes and, and how that works and, and under what circumstances uh, that it will save you money. Okay, uh, we're going to show a couple pictures here and sort of describe the process of um, a entire corn coil replacement. Usually what happens is um, Mike and his team uh, will come out and uh, do some measurements. Uh, the core and coil assembly, this does require a shutdown of the transformer section of the unit substation. Um, so this is the beauty of, a, of having a blended substation. Um, if you, um, we can de-energize the primary of one side and, and uh, if there's a secondary main breaker on the secondary of the transformer, we can open that and then we have an isolated transformer section and have a team member from AMR PIMCO uh, take all the necessary um, uh, measurements uh, to, to build a core and coil assembly. So, um, so they would leave uh, the facility and uh, about four or five weeks later, a set of engineered prints would be completed by uh, the engineering department at AMR PIMCO. And uh, the nice thing that AMR PIMCO offers is uh, they, they will make a second site visit uh, and take their near drawings and verify against the existing assembly. That is, for, for lack of better words, I put one finger uh, so that that new core and coil assembly arrives and the uh, measurements don't match up or there's a issue, um, there's really nobody to blame except uh, Mike Stafford and his team. That's so, right, that's right. <laughs> and then of course the, uh, you know, after that the core and coil or, and assembly is manufactured. So, um, here's kind of what this looks like. Uh, here's a facility uh, local here in Atlanta, where it was determined um, evaluation that a complete uh, replacement of the core coils was possible and economical. And the reason for that was, um, you'll see, uh, there is an access wall. Uh, and by the, by the way, this gentleman's name is Mike Smith, uh, who's, who's there holding the phone, doing some coordination. Um, and he's... Uh, He's probably the most important member of Mike Stafford's team. He's been doing this 20, 20 something odd years and uh, knows transformers in and out and um, can rebuild one from the from uh, start to finish uh, from the ground up in the field. So, um, so it's very nice at this facility, um, the engineer who uh, created the facility left room, uh, left access doors equipment so uh, it was um, we were able to get the core and coil assemblies in and out here's a gentleman making sure that uh, the transformer is de-energized 
And uh, here we start the process of uh, tearing down the enclosure so we can get to the boring coil. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. We continue with the enclosure uh, tear down to be able to get at the core and coils. See, this is uh, this transformer. You can tell. Just I have a question. Okay. Our question is, and this is a this is a really good question. What is the typical time frame to complete the entire replacement? Um, okay. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna address that question specifically uh, to the uh, rebuild the the, um, the replacement of the core and coil assembly which is the part of the presentation we're, we're in right now it's, this presentation is broken up into two parts the complete core and coil replacement and then in a few minutes we're going to talk about an on-site rebuild so um, I think these guys were able to um, get the core and coil assembly out and replace the, the it with the new one um, in in a little less than 48 hours that now now there's a lot of preparation involved obviously uh, of course the gentleman comes to the side he takes the measurements um, and that you know that and then that that transfer is re-energized so the the redundancy of a double-ended unit substation is is still available um, if the transformer is intact. Now that now with a failed transformer, then we have a different, uh, different circumstances to deal with. But we're replacing a transformer because it's at uh, end of life, then uh, we still have the redundancy of two transformers and. Um, so uh, during a 48-hour shutdown, uh, these gentlemen were able to uh, replace uh, the old core and coil assembly with a with a new one. So, and uh, if I, I may say answers. something at that point, Mike, um, the uh, a lot of times, and, and we find this in the field that uh, the contractors and such will plan this over a, a long weekend or uh, starting on a late on Friday, ending up finishing up early on Monday to give them the most time frame so it can fit in that 48 hour timeline that Michael was talking about. That's right. That's right. Good point, Mike. Okay. Um, and here's uh, what happens next. Um, a crane, uh, I think, I think these guys used uh, superior rigging on this one and, um, they have a uh, sled that, um, is inserted, um, right, right into that removable door and um, then the process uh, of loading the core and coil assembly uh, onto the sled starts and, um, this is uh, this is a manual process and this is uh, this uh, takes guys with a lot of muscles so and um, this is the part where everybody um, uh, says the prayers and uh, the um, core and coil assembly uh, leaves the facility and goes onto a truck uh, for, uh, in this case, uh, disposal. Okay, um, we're going to move on to uh, any any questions on on the um, the core and coil replacement. Okay, so we're going to move on to. Uh, okay, all right, we have a we have a question, um, and this is a good question. How is the labeling, uh, third party labeling, uh, UL, uh, affected by a a core and coil replacement? Uh, do you want? To, we'll let you tackle that one, Mike. All right. Um, well, we can. Uh, provide or we do provide new nameplates given all the electric characteristics of the transformer that is being built. Um, the core and coil assembly um, is no different than the one that's brought out. If it's requiring a UL um, 
listed materials, then we provide that back to that same transformer. Um, also with the new core and coils, they have to be built uh, to meet the latest um, standards such as DOE standards. So the DOE standards would be met with a new core and coil, uh, any material uh, upgrades from over the years, those would be met with a new core and coil. So the enclosure itself may have a label on it that says UL, and if that's required, then the transformer that goes back into the, the uh, existing enclosure will therefore also meet the same UL requirements. Hope that answers the question. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a important point that's been brought up, and um, the uh, there are occasions where um, if uh, UL is, is an issue, then um, it, it is uh, a good idea to have a UL inspector uh, come out and uh, sort of recertify that unit. Um, there, there are other options uh, for that as well, like uh, CSA US. And ETL are two other third-party labeling firms uh, that that do the same thing that UL does, and um, they'll probably be a little bit more economical. So um, we have another question, uh, and that is, uh, what is the warranty on a replacement core and coil assembly? Uh, that would be a well, it runs as standard as 1218, which is 12 months from anodization or 18 months from uh, the date it leaves the factory up to we can offer a five year warranty. So the replacement core and coil still provides the same warranty uh, across the board as a completely new transformer that has an enclosure and everything included in on it. So the warranty does not change from just the core and coil to having a brand new transformer overall. Great, thanks Mike. So um, here's the process uh, for an on-site rebuild, which is a little bit more comprehensive uh, for the manufacturer, uh, but the money savings comes in um, because the uh, rigging scope of the contractor is uh, dramatically different. Uh, so, Mike, if you, uh, well, after if a, you don't mind, let me, can, can I um, kind of just do a quick thing here at the very front of the on site on how this comes into play? Yeah, please do. All right, um, everyone, the on site rebuild is um, the service that we put together is so that it offers. Uh, the individual, the customer, a way to provide a rebuilt transformer uh, in the facility without it leaving the actual electrical room. And so by doing that, uh, you, you minimize so many costs associated with it, which we'll get to later in the presentation. But the, the on-site rebuild uh, provides you everything that you, you need to bring that transformer that is failed or at end of life back up to uh, its original operational condition. All right, we'll go from there, Mike. Great, Mike. So um, after a PO is issued, one of the team members will come to the site and will um, do the measurements, um, specifically of the, um, the windows of the coils, um, because in this case, remember we are we are not manufacturing a new core and coil assembly. We are actually reusing the existing core and are uh, only manufacturing new coils. So a, a measurement, a precise measurement is going to be taken of the window uh, as well as some other measurements. Uh, then there's some logistics to be worked out between the contractor and AMR PIMCO on uh, who is um, rigging what and where um, and how the, how the coils make it into the electrical room. Basically, to, to sum it up in just a few words, is that AMR PIMCO will take care of everything um, at the transformer. Um, you know, the core coils will be 
<clears throat> uh, the, the core will be de-stacked and, and AFR Co will take care of all that as long as the material can get to the, um, the transfer. Um, and uh, then there's another site visit uh, to to verify uh, some things. And um, then when after the core after the coils are manufactured uh, and tested, uh, they're shipped to the site. And um, after a shutdown is um, is scheduled, then the um, Core, the coils are put on, and, and we're going to show the, uh, step by step uh, that process. Michael, you okay. have any questions that popped up in the chat? Okay. Um, what is the advantage of rewinding versus replacing of the transformer? Okay, so um, the a transformer, if if the rigging is not cost prohibitive, then and access to the transformers is uh, simple, the transformer core and coil assembly should always be replaced. Um, it is only in situations in which the rigging is difficult. Uh, that this on-site rewind um, should be uh, considered. Um, and usually the savings is uh, dramatic. Um, with regards to rewinding, uh, there are uh, many situations in which, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Stafford mentioned uh, DOE, and uh, I believe we had a... Um, Situation recently, in fact, where a customer wanted to replace um, all of their transformers, and the um, transformers were uh, fairly tight in the uh, existing enclosure. There was not very much room, uh, kind of like the picture we're showing now. Um, and the uh, with the DOE standards. Uh, we could not manufacture, uh, nor nor could any other manufacturer um, make a transformer that um, that uh, passed would would pass the DOE test and, and uh, adhere to the required losses, uh, and also fit into that enclosure. Um, so that that's one case in which uh, it is a better option to rewind the transformer. Uh, versus uh, attempt to replace it. Uh, in addition, uh, rewinding uh, those units um, was less expensive um, than a new core and coil assembly because of the reuse of that core. And if I may interject right there, Michael, um, with the rebuilding of transformers, uh, you're providing new coils to the existing core structure, clamp work, and bus work. Um, when it comes to transformers, uh, the coils are basically the heart of the transformer. You've got insulation and conductor. Insulation breaks down over a period of time or overheating of the transformer, and therefore that's where your failure or your end of life comes from. So by rebuilding the transformer, uh, you're still using the existing electrical grade core seal, which does not go to bad. It does not degrade, it does not go to bad over a period of time. The core seal stays with the same integrity uh, throughout its life as it did when it started. Uh, so by play, replacing the coils, you're, you're getting a transformer that still has the same core structure with the same integrity with new coils on top of that, so that now you've got a transformer that's rebuilt, now it's back to its original operational condition with new insulation and all the requirements of a new transformer. So it, it does give you kind of the best of both worlds. You do get a uh, the new style 
coils, but it's built on the existing core structure so that it fits and you have a direct uh, plug and play situation where you do not have to worry about it not meeting connections. It fits back in the same box. Um, so that's just a, another purpose for it. Okay, great. Um, we do have another question, um, and this talks about uh, the core of the transformer, and is any testing or refurbishment done to the core during this process? Um, the the core itself is not, let's say, tested. Um, if we, it, it is inspected to make sure there's no damage to that from if there was or had been a failure. Um, due to, if there, as long as the core itself has no physical, visual damage, then um, it is assumed that it is uh, operational the same as it has been since day one, since its original put in place date. Um, now we do physically clean the entire core structure so that it is uh, uh, free of any contaminants and so forth. And then we apply um, a um, protective insulated painting material to that core structure along with the clamping structure and so forth after it's cleaned. So it is brought back up to a like new condition. Yeah, so um, I've seen in the field before where we have had cores that um, could not be reused. Um, the, um, the, the, the laminations need to be, um, you know, intact and not bent or bowed. Um, and if, if everything is as good as far as that goes, most of the time, the core can be reused. Um, it, it just takes. Yeah, a on our on our side, yeah, on our side, um, we have seen less than two to three percent of the time it having core damage of a sort that would not allow you to use the existing core, and that would be very evident right off the bat. And that would usually be in a transformer that has failed eventually. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, it's, it's um, what we would call a catastrophic failure. Something that um, has failed in the low voltage or had a primary failure that was bad enough to blow through the secondary windings into the core. Um, so that, that is something that is noticed quite quickly if uh, to start looking for any type of further damage. Sure. Okay, so uh, moving on with the process, um, you know, there are, there are lots and lots of measurements uh, taken and, um, you know, here's, here's what happens when things really get started. Um, it looks like this technician decided that the entire um, enclosure need, needed to be uh, removed uh, so they could get at the um, corn coils and so he's done that and um, he's also removed the top uh, core clamp and he has removed uh, the bus bars uh, so we're, we're, we're well into the process and um, here we are the top yoke of the core has been de-stacked. So he has uh, taken the time to individually remove uh, each combination uh, and uh, with a lifting device and then um, deposit it onto a uh, work table uh, until it's time to, uh, to reinstall it. And here's a close up of what we're talking about uh, with the core. If you can see the gray laminations uh, here, this is what we are referring to when we say the core. And here we uh, are looking at uh, the failed coils. Uh, 
now coming off of the transformer. And you can see he's got a, a chain fall or some sort of lifting device uh, to to remove these units. Uh, but no no crane, no no expensive twenty five thousand um, dollar rigging costs. Here is a core with no coils on it. Yeah, this is after the inspection has been done, fully cleaned and the insulation paint applied to the, the framework and uh, the core structure um, mounting material. Yeah, so this down here is what we call the core clamp or, or bottom core clamp. And it holds the, the bottom of the core and the uh, vertical uh, legs of the core together. And here we are rigging out uh, the old coils. And these coils, you know, this is the advantage of the on-site rewind is, um, if, you know, if this is a thousand kVA transformer, these coils weigh uh, you know, four or five hundred pounds. Um, they are able to be moved with a pallet jack, uh, into a freight elevator, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we have another question here, Mike. Uh, how long, on average, does it take to complete an on site rebuild? Uh, you know, after the preparations are, are done, I, I, I think this is asking how long does the transformer need to be shut down? All right. Um, if this was a application where the, the transformer hasn't failed yet and you're doing, hey, it's, uh, you know, it's at 30 year use, we need to go ahead and get this redone now before it does fail, then the, the measurements, the, the first site measurements are taking within three to four hours uh, of us arriving on site. Uh, the transformer is de-energized. We, we take the necessary critical measurements so that we can reverse engineer the coils. Uh, the transformer can then be brought up back up online and can stay online until we come back with the new manufactured coils. Now, once, the, once we are back on site for the new manufactured coils to be replaced, uh, placed on the transformer, the downtime from you de-energizing the transformer until it's tested and able to be brought back up online is normally somewhere between five to seven days. The rebuild itself takes roughly four to five days and then another additional day on both ends to de-energize, uh, decouple, um, lock tag out, and then reverse that on the back side of the rebuild where you test it, um, reconnect all the links, and bring it back up online. Okay, so here we see a brand new set of coils uh, going on to uh, the core. So these you know, measurements have been taken. These coils are manufactured to fit this exact core and they are uh, installed. This is what it looks like when all the coils are installed. And here we have the top yoke um, has already been installed and the top core clamp looks looks to have been uh, sanded and repainted, refurbished and um, reinstalled. And we have uh, the secondary bus 
now been reassembled onto the transformer. Now, I would like to, to show something right here, Michael. Um, you'll see that these leads coming out of the coils are bolted onto the actual phase bus. Um, for this particular application, um, the phase bus or the termination bus is all aluminum. And we have went back with copper coils. So that's a reason why we have a bolted connection here is that we're able to, uh, when we bring a copper, new copper coils into an application that has aluminum bus work, that's, that's nothing to be fearful of. That's something we do all the time. And it's easily done by just bolting those connections will still give you the uh, conductivity that you need to for all those connections. If this would have been a all copper transformer where you had copper leads, copper phase bus and terminations, then we would have uh, physically brazed those leads in the field. So we do bring the necessary equipment to do that as well. Here's the uh, unit that has been, uh, looks like a new, brand new primary cable. Um, from the primary that is correct. To, uh, to the transfer. So. Yeah, we, we actually, in the field, we will uh, make those cables to fit. We don't bring any pre-made cables. We have the necessary equipment to bring to the field so that all the cable runs are uh, correctly lent and uh, uh, connections are made as they're supposed to be in on the on site in the field. And there's a completed <clears throat> unit. Um, looks like you guys installed a new fan package uh, down there on the bottom. Um, so that's a that's a brand new transformer that uh, never had to leave the electrical room. That is correct. And, you know, the accessories that may be on any transformer, whether it be CPTs, uh, CTs, uh, fans, LAs, whatever they may be, we can uh, replace those at the time that we rebuild the transformer. Yes, yeah, good point. So um, I tried to summarize, you know, when, when does this, it's, it's a complicated process for a consulting engineer to evaluate what the move is here. And there's a lot of things that go into such a calculation. Um, you know, the, 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 the rigging is a big part of it. Um, so the things that have to be looked at are, um, you know, do you, do you, is this facility in a, in a in the middle of a big city where the adjacent roads cannot be shut down? You know, can, they, can you not get a permit from uh, the city to put a crane there? You know, if you, if you can, then yeah, just 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 manufacture new core and coils and be done with it. You know, um, um, you know, once you've got a freight elevator that, that is rated fully for you know the core and coils, um, and if you don't, um, then and an on-site rebuild makes sense. Um, if you don't have removable walls, um, you know, and you're going to have to um, push and pull a 18,000-pound uh, core and coil assembly, uh, you know, over the river and through the woods, um, it really, you know, it starts to make sense to look at an on-site rebuild, uh, and uh, also. Um, you know, if you're in a facility where downtime is not an option, then then um, and also on rebuild can also make sense. Um, it does take more time to do an on-site rebuild than uh, a replacement core and coil assembly. Uh, but if you have a, uh, a double-ended substation, sometimes that's not not the most pressing issue. Um, Conclusions, um, you know, the, 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 the rigging cost is, is the determining factor, uh, period. Um, being uh, rigor charge, um, you know, $50,000, $100,000 for, uh, you know, two lifts, uh, 
and then on the size of the crane and the boom that needs to show up. Um, and that's, that's when it makes sense to, um, okay, let's, you know, let's spend an extra $10,000, uh, on a core and coil assembly to do an on-site rebuild, um, and instead of spending an extra 50,000 on a crane. Um, these are the kind of, um, things that need to be calculated. Um, and you know, just like, the, just like the slide says, uh, hey, if rigging is easy, uh, just have a new core and coil assembly. If the if the rigging is, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you've got a big parking lot, you know, if you've got wide open spaces, if you can if you can if you can get the core and coils out easily, uh, by all means, buy a new core and coil assembly. Um, if the rigging uh, is expensive, uh, if we're in if we're in downtown, you know, New York City in a high rise, uh, it's it's a I guarantee you an on-site rebuild is uh, the, by far, the most economical way to do this. Um, also, that is correct, uh, Michael, and I've actually, I've actually uh, experienced a single lift of a crane in downtown Philadelphia of over $100,000 for one transformer to be lifted from street level to the roof level. Uh, that's, that's just a single transformer. That's not including the actual cost of the crane, the, the permits, the the other associated items. So when you come into a a delta of that magnitude, you know the on-site rebuild is really a an awesome option. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know the best way to do it uh, is to you know have an evaluation. Uh, you know, call call Mike Stafford and have one of his team uh, look at the site uh, and help with the evaluation, and um, they will be more than happy to to help. So, what uh, what what questions do we have? Uh, looks like we have a new uh, on-site rebuilt transformers adhere to DOE 2016 efficiency standards. Okay. Um, well, the the rebuild transformers are grandfathered into the existing uh, conditioned DOE that was that was available back then. So they are no they do not meet a 2016 DOE requirement, and therefore you you know you don't have to worry about getting penalized for that because they are grandfathered in. And that comes into play where Michael was saying, if you have a enclosure that is, is very tight to begin with, you have a uh, substation that you really can't move the primary switch so that you can increase that uh, transformer size to meet the DOE requirement, then a rebuild is a good option because you don't have to. It is already grandfathered in. Yeah, just to elaborate on that, um, there are situations where we can bring a transformer up to uh, 2016 DOE standards. Um, it's not going to be every transformer, and and the reason for that is the DOE standards are are made up of two numbers: the the no load losses and the load losses, and um, the the size of the core. Uh, and the quality of core steel used uh, are uh, determine the no load losses of the transformer. So uh, when we do an on-site rebuild, we're, we're we're stuck with that. We're we're going to reuse the existing core. So so there is nothing we can do about the no load losses. So to to get to the DOE standard, we have to make that up in the load losses. Which uh, we have to make a. Uh, we'd certainly have to use a copper coil, and uh, we would have to make a larger coil. And there are times that the um, the coil that's designed to to meet those DOE losses will not fit on the existing core. So uh, it's 
Is it possible to bring the transformer up to existing DOE standards? Uh, sometimes. Uh, sometimes not. Um, we have another question here. Uh, have you ever had a situation where you put a bigger KVA just to enclose? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, we did, and in fact, I was involved with one. Um, but the caveat is the existing transformer was aluminum wound, and we had lots of room in that enclosure. Uh, went back in with a copper wound transformer. We we put in a new core and coil assembly on that one. I don't I don't think that was a re on site rewind. I uh, might wrong, but. Um, I think we put a fan, an extra fan package on that transformer, so we, yeah, we were the able USC, to. That's when that was. Yeah, yeah, we were we were able to provide a larger KVA um, transformer in an existing enclosure um, because it was a situation where the transformers were um, fairly heavily loaded in. A normal configuration, um, and if the tie was closed um, and they were operating on one, I believe those transformers uh, would have been outside of the nameplate KVA rating. So that, the answer to that question is yes. So not all the time, but there's definitely times when you can. Thank you very much for uh, your attention, and uh, we will uh, post this presentation on the website in a few days. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you. Guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.